Thank you for coming. Welcome to this uh, session. And um, we're going to talk a bit about gardening and mangoes and fruits and agile transformation. Uh, my name is Giuseppe De Simone. I'm, as I said, I'm originally from Italy, but I moved to Stockholm two, two years ago. I work as an agile coach at Ericsson. Uh, I'm a lead agile coach in one of the Ericsson R&D organization. Um, yeah, I have a technical background. I started as a developer and working many years as a system architect, technical management of, pro of projects. And then I started my agile journey in 2009. And since then I've been working as a lean and agile coach and for some years as a manager. I'm uh, one of the, proud to be one of the 80 certified scrum coaches in the world. Our community counts 25 people in, in Europe. And unfortunately, I'm, I feel a bit alone in, in Sweden. But anyway, so um, I would also like to hear a bit about you. So uh, I'm going to repeat kind of the poll that that Eric did this morning. So I would like to, to, to see about which kind of audience you are. Uh, and by the way, regardless of the role you have, you're all awesome. It's not about who is. <laughs> it's, it's very nice to be, to be here. So I mean, how? Who of you is a developer? I mean, just raise your hand if you're a developer. Good. Um, testers, QA. Cool. And um, project manager. Hmm, pretty many. Um, other kind of manager, line manager, department manager. Great. Um, all the rest, I don't know. Agile coaches, scrum masters. Cool. But anyway, you're all awesome, and this is for all of you uh, today. But also some other kind of poll. Uh, how, how many of you has, uh, you know, um, let's say less than one year experience were working in agile projects or agile organization? Mm -hmm. Who has instead more than three years experience working in agile organization? OK, and you the rest, you're all in the middle. Great. Thank you. So. A um, few months ago, I met a colleague at, um, at the coffee machine. And this is a colleague, he comes from, from Bangladesh. He's a very nice person, he's a product owner, and he's also a very brave person. How many of you knows what is um, this um, Hawaii pizza? Do you know Hawaii pizza? You all know about that. I mean, this is for an Italian, it's kind of blasphemy. So, and this guy is very brave because he came to, down to my hometown. I come from Salerno, which is close to Naples. And he was there asking for, for a, an Hawaii pizza. And I mean, he risked a lot, I can tell you. So he's very brave. So, I mean, at the coffee machine, we were discussing about, uh, uh, you know, what's, what's going on in the, in the, in the week. I was, I was coaching him for a while. And then I said, you know, this transformation we are all going, going on, it's, it's kind of uh, a mango tree. You know, everybody looks like, I mean, they want mangoes, but you know, s most of people, they don't, do not know how juicy mangoes look like, and they actually they don't know how to get juicy mangoes. And they say, yes, this is true good metaphor to describe about. And we started to play a bit around this, this metaphor, and that's where all this mango tree stuff um, originated. Um, so what we're going to describe is that, okay, how, how can a gardener um, can get juicy fruits? And what, what are the, the, you know, the, the similar similarities with how you can get your company agile? And then I say, I, I choose this title of the project, said, how to get your company agile, how you can become agile, not how you can implement agile, because I say, I mean, agile is, is, is an adjective, it's not a noun, so it's not something that you, but it's something that you actually become. And um, so let's, let's see, let's have a look at this metaphor. And this is the first things. And when I discover this I image, it comes really as a, a revelation. I'm not expert of, of mangoes because uh, this guy was more uh, expert of, I say, I mean, how many kind of mangoes you have? So this is very, very the first, the first steps. You should first define, decide what kind of fruits you, you want to get. And of course, choose the seeds appropriately. So if you want to get mango, you better use mango seeds. Because if you plant 
onion seeds, you get onion. You will, cannot expect to, to get mango. And this is what actually happened. So, so the, the real starting point to, to, to everything, and this is, I mean, this presentation is, you know, based on our journey and my experience coaching several organizations in Ericsson, really, really the foundation of everything is asking yourself, why are we doing this? Because agile is, I mean, it's not the goal. It's just a way you, you, you do things. So why, what problems are we trying to solve by transforming us to become agile? What, what do you want to achieve? This is extremely critical and, uh, you know, it's some, sometimes, uh, many times, it's, it's, um, it's not given the right importance. This is actually important for any change and imagine for such a dramatic change that it's, you know, shifting completely your paradigm about how you do things, how you get things done. Hmm? So the why should be very, very clearly stated, understood from the manager and, and, and aligned in the organization. What are the problems that we are supposed to solve with this? And are they worth solving? And is, is agility one way of solving these problems? And then the second step is, is really to have a strategy. And this morning, we discussed about top, is it top down or is it bottom up? I mean, I think it's, it's both. I would call it a sandwich strategy. So that you, I mean, of course, it's such an important change that must be initiated top down. So it's important that the, what, what the organization of values and the business goals and the mission and the, the management culture, and this is all aligned top down and, and the, uh, agile transformation should serve the business needs. And also, I mean, there must be resources and support coming top down. On the other side, this is not a traditional change management process where you, you know, set a plan, set KPIs, and deploy the organization. There are things that must must come bottom up, like selection of practices and tools. I really like the metaphor before about the 1,000 flower blossom. I think it's excellent. I mean, to to capture what what I mean here, it's really like things should come bottom up, and and self-organization and empowerment are, are are really important. I will talk more about self-organization. So it's kind of it's a there are two equally important slice of bread and you have some nice mango uh, sl <laughs> in, in, inside so it should be uh, top down does it make sense to you hmm? so let's go one step further so we talked about the seeds so but every, uh, um, each and every gardener but by the way how many of you have i mean some gardening experience is there any of you okay so you will oh so many so you will tell me if i'm take doing saying stupid things uh, you know uh, i really would like to have your feedback but but anyway so the seeds are important but the quality of land is as important right is that correct so so you, you i mean a gardener knows that okay after planting seeds it's important to work the land appropriately it's also important i mean how much the air is polluted how good the water is and also i mean it's also important where you grow your, your, your plants, because if you grow something, for instance, I mean, if you grow lettuce close to artichokes, probably it will become bitter. Uh, I mean, that was my, my grandmother say, ah, ah, this is bitter, probably it was gr grown close to artichokes. I mean, that's, that's something that I know from my grandmother. So this is, so also pollution can be detrimental, there are things, so, so working the, the land, so it's the environment that's very, very important. So let's have a look at a bit about the environment. Do you recognize this picture from the aircrafts? So do you remember what, uh, what uh, the, the hostess say when they, you know, are doing these uh, security advices? What did they say? Great. Thank you very much. That's exactly, you should start training managers. Because, I mean, the, you see the top-down part of this, the why and the values are so important that I mean, the manager should be the first one who can embrace those values and principles. So they can then teach to the others how to do this. And I can tell you this was one, one big mistake from, from our first or organizational change in the first organization I was coaching, that we you know, kind of underestimated the importance of this part. And it was pretty painful, and we had to recover after a while. So first of all is to, to, 
to, to train uh, managers. And you know, the risk many times is that, ah, uh, you know, but this is Scrum and Agile, but this is for development teams. So, so let's send them to some course. And you know, we are managers, we understand a lot. But uh, uh, you have, uh, you know, I'm also a trainer. I spend 10, 50 percent of my, 15 percent of my time delivering trainings, from Scrum training to leadership training. And then sometimes I call, ah, oh, you have two days training, but can you make us two hours for us because we don't have time, you know? So, and, and that's, that's it's not going, getting anywhere. So training managers is very, very important because then the manager to take care to set up the environment to have the team flourish. And then one important concept uh, which you can find, for instance, in a book like Succeeding with Agile from Mike Cohn, is that try to set up a transformation team. I mean, I'm really talking about when you, when you are kicking off an Agile transformation, because, of course, the, 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 the most important thing is to have a development, have teams that are, you know, successful. But especially at the beginning, when you don't have in the, organiza in the organization, when you don't have the structure to support this, it's important to have some kind of, 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 uh, of structure that is taking care of, you know, providing the, 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 the support and the resources and training and coaching for the new roles. And on the, on the other side, I mean, getting impediments and try to solve them quickly. That's extremely important until this gets, you know, systemized in the organization. And uh, who, can, who you can have in these this, uh, transformation teams, of course, I mean, if you know the bell curve of change, of innovation change, then it might, you might want to have some kind of innovators. And um, may, hopefully they are coming from different parts of the organization. They are coming from different roles. So it's good that you have senior manager, but maybe some developers, some product owner, some scrum master, they can really have this, like, this uh, task force for solving the first impediments very, very fast. And, you know, Normally, they work having a, what, what I call a transformation backlog that comes both top-down from the strategy and bottom-up from the impediments coming from the teams. So they're really working like an agile team working on these things. And then focus on people's skills. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen is that, you know, if you want to implement Scrum, Scrum has uh, totally new roles. Roles that have a, a skill set that you cannot find in any other existing role in traditional organization. Yet, one of the most common mistakes is to map existing roles to new roles. So maybe you see, ah, okay, you are a system architect, from, from tomorrow you will be a product owner. Or you are a project manager, from tomorrow you will be a Scrum master. So just changing the names. And instead, you know, a really lean approach is not like to define a process and, and deploy on the people, but it's more about trying to grow people to make them into condition to do a good job and to make them into condition to, to solve their, their own problems. And it's very important to understand that training is not enough because we believe that we send people to some training and then from the day one they will be able to implement this. Actually, this is uh, coming from 2009 and say that, okay, well, what happens when you do a training? After the training, normally you can see that in the first two, three weeks, people are getting very energized. Coming after the training, they see, they think they can change the world. And, and then you observe, you know, a bit of improvement of behaviors, maybe a bit decreasing the results because they are not so familiar with the new concept, but after a while it becomes so hard, then, then you go back to your original uh, behavior and your original practices, and then probably you get a, a, a small in improvement, but not more than, than the small one. Then what you need to do is to complement the training with, with some more, something more, and that's that's was really, really our, our experience. We're focusing a lot on mentoring and coaching the new roles to make them into the condition to, to really uh, increase their skills and be able to solve the problems. Because one of the problems with Scrum is that Scrum is, it looks so simple that they say, ah, okay, this is piece of cake. So we will implement very easily. 
And then, but the trick is that it's simple, but it's not easy. There is so many things that you need to know to make it working that actually, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge challenge. And that's something that is so many times underestimated. So focus on people's skills. And you can see this is not only valid for, for developers, this is valid for anyone. For instance, I mean, you recognize this guy. This is Agile, isn't it? That's what I say. I mean, Agile is an adjective, it's not a noun. This is Agile, how you can be really Agile in your context. And that's what I say. I mean, in order to, you know, to go from, from few practices that you learn in a training, in how you act in reality, how you can be able to face the challenges uh, that you have every day, then you need a lot of skills and you need a lot of practice. And if Messi practices every single week with, uh, with you know, lazy exercises like this, but then this, this okay, wh wh how can we expect that we don't learn and we don't practice and then we, are, we, we go to a very complex project and then we are successful? How can even imagine this? This is wishful thinking. So really, really focus on, 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 on people's skills. And, you know, it's mentoring and coaching. And it's also about creating learning events that let people practice in a safe environment to be able to perform when the challenges come. Because Scrum is, you know, it's just a model and it's just a map. Then when you go to the territory, normally it's, it's very much different. And then you should be able to face the problems that you find down on the territory. And I like this quote, that it's really not enough to do your best. You should know what to do and do your best. How many of you know W.E. Deming? Hmm? For those of you who don't know it, I really encourage you to, to search. He's, I can, I, he's the father of Lean, in, in a way. You know, everybody knows that Lean comes from Toyota, from Toyota production system, but actually this guy, who's uh, an American statistician, and um, I mean scientist, after the Second World War, where Japan was really in bad shape, this guy flew from U.S. to Japan to help um, you know, them uh, build, again, the industry and the society, etc. And uh, the in Japanese industry implemented a lot of his concept about total equality control, about respect for human beings and uh, automation with the human touch. I mean, I really encourage you to, to, to look in, into... into what this guy has, has to say. So uh, not, not so many people know him, but he, he can be considered, so from a certain perspective, the real, real father of Lean. One more thing. Uh, remove your functional silos. That's very important. And try to focus on cross-functional teams, small cross-functional teams that can be delivered value end-to-end -end every single sprint. It looks easy, but it's not. So organize your teams. Try to understand what is the value that you have to deliver. Organize your team around those value. And you know, the logistics is very, very important as well. And you see those teams, these are working around one table. This is an on-site team, but this the same team. They have uh, uh, like big screen with, with video conference uh, on, on wheels that they can draw and have everywhere in, in, the, in the team space to talk with other teams on other sites. So really what Jan Eric was saying this morning, try to lower your communication cost. Either you are on site or, so cross-functional teams are part of, you know, working the land that allows you to, to succeed. Of course, you can do it with component teams, but it will be much harder because when you have the worst things that I experience you can have in an organization is to have uh, your development system and your team structure built around your, your system architecture. If you do this, you are um, embedding 
uh, a lot of dependencies in your own development system. So there's nothing good or bad, it's just uh, how much probability you want to have to succeed. And with cross-functional teams, you might have um, more probabilities to, to succeed. Technical excellence. I said Scrum is beautiful. I, I, I love Scrum. I'm a certified Scrum coach, so I, I'm, you know, um, preaching Scrum <laughs> everywhere. But Scrum is not enough. Scrum is a wonderful way to organize the work, but Scrum doesn't say anything about how you can consistently build and deliver a prot potentially shippable product increment every sprint which is the most important thing, the real core of Agile, but it's also the most difficult thing. So it's a lot about uh, technical excellence, it's a lot about finding new ways of developing uh, software, finding uh, new technical practices that can complement, uh, give answers about how, how to do this. And, you know, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. It's not that agility means taking cut, cut corners and, and deliver bad, bad uh, quality products. This will actually, you know, create less agility. Okay. Are you, does it make sense? I mean, is this making sense? And now I ask again your, um, you know, advice from, from those of you who know gardening, if I'm... So the third step, so we say selection of the on seeds and let's plant seeds and then let's d take some nice piece of land and let's work this piece of land. So the third step, so how do I know that I'm doing a good job? How do I know that, I mean, I will really get the, the juicy fruits that I expect or I really, I will really get the right kind of mango that I'm expecting. So, will talking about how this plant look like help? If you just talk, okay, let's see, I think this is going to look like this and this is going to look like this. This is not, not, not helping. So what we have to do is start planting some seeds and some growing some plants and water the plant and uh, put some, you know, uh, fertilizing, etc., and you know, ensure that they grow strong, and try to see some fruits. So it's really starting doing things that you can understand if you're going in the right direction. By the way, agile is all about empirical process control. So I mean, the real experience comes, the real knowledge comes from experience. So you really learn by doing things. So start running experiments, and. Uh, for instance, start with one team. Start with one team, one feature, and, and try to, to, for instance, to apply Scrum. Scrum is a great educational uh, model. It's a great teacher to teach you how to be agile if you've never uh, done this. So take one team, take some small things and try to observe how, how it works. And some of you might say, okay, but I mean, one team is nothing. We have a, a big organiza organization, many, many people, thousands of people in many, many sites. And I like what Craig Larman says, that if an orga organization is not able to do mm, proper Scrum with one team, how can you imagine to scale up? So this is a real proof point. And the, what is the proof point? The proof point is not to see if Scrum works, because we already know that Scrum works. It's just to challenge your organization by using Scrum, is to see how your uh, organization, how this living system that is your organization reacts when you challenge it with, with, with Scrum. What are the problems that come? How can they, they, they be addressed? And this is the transformation team playing an important role here, trying to address those problems quickly and try to learn fast and try to learn from this experiment to see how you can grow in how you can scale it to the whole, whole enterprise. And I mean, if you ask the question, what will I choose as an experiment? I mean, my, uh, the suggestion is, I mean, common sense, of course. You want to use not, you know, a very small and easy project or a very small and easy feature 
or product because probably you want to get have some credibility about this experiment also with the rest of the organization. On the other side, you don't want to use your most critical feature or most critical project because you want also to create some kind of uh, safe to fail environment because probably there will be problems. But on the other side, I mean, it's very, very important that this experiment is, is really, really closely monitored by, by the rest of the organization, by senior management, so they can, we can learn about before scaling up. And then it's, it's about, you know, trying to slowly scale up. Our experience is, my experience that you should be, do it, you know, incrementally, so you can have a bit better control on it, and also try to build some capabilities when you are going to scale, like, you know, teach and coach the, the new roles and um, build some agile coaches. We will talk about it later. And especially because, I mean, Tom Gill said that if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it on, right, on, a, on a big scale. So start incrementally. But on the other side, it's also about the balance. Because if you're doing too slowly, then you risk to, you know, having the organization being too much in the mud, being too much in a hybrid situation, lose a bit of momentum, etc. So it's also a balance. Uh, but then the, the question is, when we're going to scale, what are we supposed to scale up? That's a very important question. Because normally what we have in mind when, what, what is the first thing that you have in mind, pops up into your mind when I, when I say scaling? What is the first thing that pops up into your mind? Hmm? Sorry, sitting. Yeah? What else? Probably st structures, adding, duplicating, adding some processes. But actually what, what I want to again stress is that it's about scaling up learning. It's again, I mean, if you have one team then it's like you play in, a, you know, in some minor uh, football championship. But if you are, then if you play in the Barcelona in the Champions League, then you need much better skills. So it's again, it's about you know learning from what you have done and it, and increase increase your skill. And then this is one of my favorite uh, topics. It's about the cultural change. I mean. Making your organization agile, it's not about adopting just a new way of developing software. As I said, it's a total paradigm shift. It's about, you know, like moving from, from Android to iOS. You cannot use the same applications as before. You have to use other applications because you are changing the operating system of, of your organization. That's the, 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 the why the, the, the culture is, is very, very important. And I want just to mention two things that I think are crucial in the cultural change, two things that must change dramatically. And the first thing is that focus on, on the value. And value is what is valuable for your customer. It's not what will please your boss or the boss of your boss. And that's very hard. Try to focus on the value for the customer. The first agile principle principle says our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early continuous delivery of valuable software. So we do things that we focus on, on bringing value to the customer. And the second cultural change is stop starting, start finishing. Stop starting, start finishing. We have the, the belief that Okay, if we have to finish something, I mean, the earlier we start, the better it is. Actually, the, what comes from, from Lean and Kanban is that to limit your working process. You would be in a better shape if you're focusing on one or few things at a time. And again, this is a big cultural change. Focus on value, not only once, but consistently deliver value every sprint. I can bet you, I mean, uh, if this is making a big change in the organization. If you just focus on this, how can I make a potentially shippable product increment every two weeks? This changes dramatically the way people operate, the way people uh, interact with each other. And, and actually the core of Agile is about this, because if you don't have a product, how can you inspect and adapt? How you can 
change. And then, of course, limit your work in progress. Focus on, on few things at a time. Another important thing is self-organization. In, in this context, of course, you cannot uh, expect to control everything. So, of course, the decision must be made by those that are closer to the problem. And that's why self-organization is very, very important. And you can push it as much as you can. You will not uh, do it wrong. I mean, the more you push it, the better it is. Of course, you need to create support for these people. And this is an example in one of the organizations that we have 100 people. So we said, OK, these 100 people, now you, you split up in teams uh, yourself. You select your product owner and scrum master, and also you select your manager. Of course, I mean, there were a pool of managers they could pick. And you know, we, we, we put some um, uh, constraints, like, OK, that you have, uh, you have to make sure that that all the teams are equally have equally possibility of being successful. You, each person was given a, a tag with with uh, his competencies. So you have to make sure that in each team there is at least certain amount of this competence uh, coding testing. But then trusting the people that they will work out themselves. And after one day, they came up with with uh, with the with the team structure and and with defining the the departments, the section in the. So it was extremely interesting and you know then these people they feel they are on the same boat which is actually the whole sense about the self-organization so the more and this is also uh, uh, something that i learned is that about try to have as less roles as, as 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 possible scrum is a master here because you say you have only three roles product owner scrum master and development team and that's it uh, but, but because the more role you have, the more responsibility you define, the more fences you define, the less people will feel that they are sharing responsibility for, for, for the success. And actually, uh, I, I like what, what two CSC colleagues said last year. said, I mean, it's very unfortunate that they use the, ro the term roles for scrum roles. So I would, uh, they, they call it their interest. They are not roles in the usual sense. Because when you say roles, you think about the description of, of task and responsibility. But actually, the goal is that, OK, the product owner main focus, main interest is, is doing the right things. The, product, the Scrum Master, the, the development team main interest is doing things right. And the Scrum Master main interest is to make things improve. But they are on the same boat. They are paddling on the same direction. That's extremely important. And one important thing is that, don't underestimate the importance of structure because culture follows structure. So tries to subordinate every structure to the purpose of delivering value as fast as possible. Of course, if you have a silos organization, silos structure, what kind of culture you can expect? Or if you have, uh, for instance, I mean, many coordinators, probably you will see lack of, of responsibility of people stepping up. Or if you have checkpoints and committees reviewing the, the, the work, maybe don't be surprised to get lack of initiative, for instance. So I mean, the structure uh, can. And then how you can make your transformation self-sustainable. Actually, there are three important things. Uh, the first thing is that try to build internal coaches that can you know, sustain the transformation. They can be you know, permanent change agents. Because I mean, if you're really agile, you are never agile enough, right? It's about continuous improvement. So, you cannot say, okay, now we don't need these coaches anymore because we are done. Hmm? And then also trying to nurture communities of practice that, I mean, give people a place to meet with colleagues that share the same passion or share the same uh, profession and try to talk uh, across teams. And last but not least about HR. It's a lot about also agile, adjust HR processes. And, and now we are in the process about, you know, re revisiting um, leadership framework and uh, performance management, uh, giving space to you know team goals. You don't have individual goals anymore, or you have partially, only partly. You have individual goals, etc. So that this is not giving contradictory messages. Okay, we have ten minutes, so let's go to the last point. And the last point is that okay, how do you know that you are? doing the right things. So at the end, the gardeners you know, grow plants, and then she can, he or she can taste the first fruits. And then you can decide, OK, is it juice enough? Is it what I want? 
Sometimes you can, you can e even not wait before tasting because you can tell uh, apart a watermelon from a mango, right? So you can, say, you can see even from distance that if you're doing so. And then if it, it's going in the right direction, then you can plant more seeds. If it's going well, then you can maybe want to add more water, more fertilizer, or change the seeds, for instance. So in the end, in the end, it is, um, as I said before, an agile transformation is not a, a one-shot change management program. It's a lot about uh, empirical approach. So how, can, how do you know how to do things? I mean, if you have never done this before. So really, I mean, the most uh, sensible way of doing this is uh, implementing Agile by being Agile, in a way. So using agility to, to transform your organization by continuously uh, have, of course, a transition strategy, have this transformation backlog, but of course, trying to, uh, to build measure land, try to inspect and adapt to prototype and refine and through, through baby steps. Uh, I mean, it's a lot about continuous improvement. And it's also a bit about, you know, dancing with the system. Probably it will not be a straight way forward. You need to go uh, around and be able to, to cope with, the, with, the, with the, your existing structure for a while, learn to be be cultural, maybe speaks some language with the manager, some other language with your team, trying to, you know, learn to dance with the system because it's all about be able to, to change. And also, I mean, enable transparency. That's extremely important because it's a lot about that empirical process control. So how can you keep control of your things if you're not able to look into, into this, in, into your product, into your processes? And also, it's extremely important. If the decision have to be, you know, distributed in the organization, then it's extremely important that people who have to take the decision have also access to the information. And being transparent does not only mean putting things in on, in a website. That sometimes it's it's more information refrigerator. It's not really making things transparent. I have this example. This is not from Ericsson, but from Google. But I think it's very important. It's very it's a good example of radical transparency, where you're putting things up in, a, in the toilet even, so that you cannot say, I don't have the link, I don't know where to find this information. It's, it's a bit of... So, and with this, I think we can sum up a bit what we covered, what might be, I promise you, what, what might be the things that you, you should not miss to set the foundation of your Agile transformation. So this is what, what we covered all around. And maybe usually negative examples are, are also good to understand. This might also be some failure patterns. You can see kind of dual things of what we discuss. Maybe pushing agile, managers exclude themselves from the change. No little investment in learning and coaching, leadership team not leading the change. Start by defining the agile process and deploying on the people, so having this Taylorist approach that someone knows better how to do things and then deploy it. Instead, focus on build people skills and let them decide uh, how they want to work. But in God we trust, all others must bring data, so I don't want you to trust me, so I would like to bring some data to say, okay, is it really worth it to do it? And I mean, just small data, this is, um, I mean, in, in, in one of the organizations that, for instance, we, we managed in 18 months to reduce the average lead time for developing a feature from concept to be ready for deployment by 25%. And um, in particular, we, reached, um, we, we did this by reducing by 60% the early phases. With the early phase, you can see the green and the, and the orange. That, I mean, normally projects are late because they start late. So we... <laughs> try to find a way how we can start earlier. And replacing waterfall studies with, with more about iterative backlog earlier, and much earlier prototyping and developing, and also using a product owner team to minimize dependencies among teams and having a portfolio Kanban to, to reduce the working process of what we were doing. And then also, I mean, also the quality part. We're also reducing the defects at customer side by 
42%, by having uh, cross-functional teams, incorporating also QA engineers, so they could do end-to-end, -end. and moving from sprint-based to daily-based system integration, with many teams building uh, and testing, um, with many team builds and tests per day, and builds and tests of the old system, both nightly and as soon as a user story was finished. And by the way, we reached these two results by increasing the motivation index by 10%, because we really started with, uh, with, with changing also the leadership side style, moving for more to a, a servant leadership uh, approach. So whatever approach you see, you will, have, you will find by digging in your land and trying to, to grow these plants, you will have an inevitable discovery. I can you know, bet on this. And this is your inevitable discovery. So, if that's the truth, what can you do? I mean, you will just, you know, solve any problem, just make the, the problems more visible. So, what I suggest is just start planting your seeds now and don't wait so long so that you can discover your problem faster. And uh, maybe everything you do will be successful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Giuseppe. And do we have any questions? No? No questions? Everything? Uh, in one of the slides with the fruits, you mentioned a term one pager. Can you tell us ah, more? Okay. What you no, this was uh, actually the terminology that we had when we started. I mean, the Jajal implementation. We had basically three different phases: one ideation phases that was basically, uh, I mean, in the in the, in the before it was uh, writing a one-page document to explain, for instance, I mean, what the, that feature was supposed to do and having a list of requirements. And then you had more more of uh, you know uh, analysis phase and then execution phase. So we we stick to the same you know structure, even though it changed, so that to see how we improved compared to the to the old. But then when we started really doing the things in the right way, then these phases were actually mixing up together. So this is more like ideation phase when you have some ideas and you start to to define um, what, what this feature is supposed to do and why. Uh, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, one question. Uh, for the medium-sized company, how much time do you think it would take to fully transfer to Agile? <laughs> I, I cannot answer because I... I mean, first of all, I would say forever. Because, you know, if you're really Agile, you are never Agile enough. But, I mean, going back to your... I, I can tell two stories about... I, I, I don't know about your contest, but maybe these two stories will... So one is from from um, always Craig Larman, and I know that he, he went to one company and they asked him something like this. It was 2,000 people, this, this company. And uh, they asked him, okay, how, how long do you think we can have it? And this was, uh, he said, uh, okay, I think uh, from th three to five years. And the manager said, no, no, but that's not possible. We have to make it one year. And he said, if you want to make it one year, it will take, it, it will take 10 years. So that's, that's one thing. And uh, I, I don't want to tell you the other story because uh, about my company, so about we asked the same question to one of the coaches that helped us when we started the journey, and I don't want to tell you what the answer was, but big numbers. But anyway, just to give you the idea about uh, it takes time because it's, you know, it should go down to, to your beliefs about how you get things done in, a, in, a, in an organization. And, uh, and it's a complex environment because it's, you know, the project you're doing are complex, software is complex because it's not a product you can see, but it's a solution in the head of people. Then you don't have one person, you have many people that, you know, sometimes they, um, they have to work together, so it's, it's very complex. I hope I answered your question in a way. Uh, okay, do we have more questions? The last one question, we have to time. Uh, usually we talk about transformation like IT departments. What about the transformation for business? 
like operations, mm -hmm. how long it takes to transform and to adapt to work together with IT? Yeah, I mean, w w whatever I, I, I mean, learning that I covered here actually come come from from working with uh, with both um, um, R&D departments, uh, IT department, and more the, the the business side, not covering the the marketing part. Um, so it was uh, like a joint cooperation between business and and software development because you cannot do it. You can start doing you know piloting things in in a in a small team as I explained to you, but actually even if it's a small uh, scenario, it's better that the more end to end you can make it, the better it is. I mean the the more you can understand about how this organism, uh, the organization reacts to the virus of of agile. What are the uh, the antibodies that it creates and how you can fix them. So, so yes, I mean, this was a journey mainly with the, we, we call it product management or product line, more this business part. Um, uh, and as I also worked in, in other parts of the uh, organization, more working with the, with, the, with the tools, and it was, again, I mean, a business and, and uh, development together. You can uh, not, you don't go very far only in the in the IT, but if it's good to start, start from there. It's better to start earlier with something small than wait for something big to happen, because it will always grow organically. So it's it's but it's anyway you should start small. 